practice question from the ACCA CB practice platform and uh, I have actually opened up the practice exam too and from the practice exam too I will be doing this question number two so let's start discussing about this question number two that what exactly is this question number two all about so when I talk about this question number two it tells us that the following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the questions which is Norton company, the hedging details, non-executive director's comments and the information should be used to answer the question requirements within your chosen response options. So there are requirements to the question also. What exactly are those requirements? It says evaluate which of the exchange traded derivatives could give Norton the higher receipt considering scenarios when the options are and the options are not exercise. So one of them is a hedging situation where you have to expect where you have to estimate the receipt uh, using the different types of hedging methodologies. Next is the discuss the benefits and drawbacks of not on company in using forward contracts compared with using the over the counter options and explain why not on may prefer to use exchange traded derivative rather than over the counter derivatives to hedge foreign exchange risk and explain to the non executive director how the mark to market process would work for the CHF futures. So there is a mark to market process that we need to talk about including the significance of the data supplied by the treasury departments illustrate your explanation with calculations showing what would happen on the first day using the data supplied. So these are the few specific requirements to the question that we actually have to answer. Okay, now see, so let's talk about this not on company that what is what exactly is the scenario all about? Let's try to see. So it says not on company, new turn company, sorry, new turn company is a company based in the USA, supplying medical equipment to USA and Europe. So you are based in USA, where you based in USA and you're supplying to USA and Europe. You're supplying to USA and Europe. It is 30th November 2008, New Turn Company's Treasury Department is currently dealing with a sale to Swiss customer of CHF 12.3 million. So what are you dealing with? You are dealing with a Swiss customer where the sale is going to be of 12.3 million, which has just been agreed, where the customer will pay for the equipment on 31st May 2009. The Treasury Department intends to hedge the foreign exchange risk on this transaction using traded futures or options as far as possible. So they wish to use the traded futures or the options as far as possible. That's what they wish to do. Now it says the treasury department intends to hedge any amount not hedged by futures or option contract will be hedged on the forward market. So any unhedged amount will be hedged using the forward market. Now let's just see. There's this hedging details. What are the hedging details which are available? The exchange rates are quoted which is US dollar per CHF. Since you are a US company, it's a direct quote. It's a direct quote. The spot rate is there, the three months forward rate is there, six months forward rate is there, so and so, so and so. The currency futures, the size of the currency futures is in CHF. So it's actually majorly the Swiss franc that they are in, priced in. The future price quoted as US dollar per CHF are as follows. Then you've got currency options. Contract size is this, this, this. Exercise price per quotation is this. Premium, so and so, so and so. Futures and option contract mature at the month end. Then there are these other non-executive directors comments. Uh, I just need to see, okay, they are for part C, so I'm just ignoring them right now. I'm not confusing myself with them right now. I'm just talking about the part one and two. What is the date today? 30th November 2008. 
and the customer will pay for the equipment on 31st May 2009. So if I talk about this scenario, I would say if we use forward contracts, if we use forward contracts, although the questions requirement is not there, right? Questions requirement is which one of them is going to give you the higher receipt. But anyways, if we use the forward contract, the your customer will pay, customer will pay. Customer will pay CHF 12.3 million in six months time. This needs to be hashed. This needs to be hashed. So the customer would be paying 12.3 million in six months time and this needs to be hashed. Now what is actually going to happen is that if this needs to be hashed, so, Newton Company will be selling CHF and bank will buy CHF. Since it's a direct quote, therefore the bank will buy at lower rate the bank will buy at lower rate so what are you gonna do you're gonna say that the applicable forward rate is going to be what the applicable forward rate is going to be what the six months forward is this one point zero three five eight I bet the applicable forward rate is going to be one point zero three five eight the amount of receipts in USD is going to be CHF 12.3 million multiplied by the applicable exchange rate now the amount in terms of USD is going to be what 12.3 multiplied by 1.0358 gives you 12.74 million. What is it going to be? 12.74 million. So I repeat, what is it going to be? 12.74 million. That is what it is going to be. 12.74 million. That is what it is going to be. Is everyone okay till now? If we are using the forward contract, this is how things are going to be. Is everyone okay till now? Yeah, please confirm you all are okay. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Now, so that's a forward contract that we went through. Now let's talk about the future contracts. So with respect to the future contract, you got to see which contracts, then the number of contracts, um, the hedge strategy. So overall hedge summarized, overall hedge summarized. Now what next is there? If I talk about the future contracts, let's just try to see this.
Just wait a bit, please. <clears throat> okay, now let's just see. The currency futures are the contract size of CHF 125,000. The prices are quoted as USD per CHF. The prices are quoted as USD per CHF. That's how the prices are quoted as. Now what next is there? We have got December future, we have got March future, we have got June future. So what are you going to do? You are going to say uh, which contracts so always the maturity whose maturity is immediately after your receipt or payment date so June contracts the number of contracts is going to be what 12.3 million divided by 0.125 98.4 so we always use round figures so it's the 98 contracts that you would go for the hedge strategy has to be either buy now, sell later or sell now, buy later. Now let's just think about it. I always ask you what's your risk. So you are expected to have a receipt. You are expected to have a receipt. You are expecting that the interest rate would go down. Good, go down. So now is a higher rate. The expectation is lower rate. So again what you would do is that you would sell and you would buy. So resultingly your overall, overall hedge is going to be summarized as what? Your overall hedge is going to be summarized as, as, as what? As buy, sorry, sell 94 June future contracts now and sell and buy later. Sell 94 June futures contract now and buy later. Now what is actually going to happen now is that we would calculate the lock-in rate. What is this lock-in rate? The expected spot on the transaction date. It's the expected spot on the transaction date. How do you calculate it? Let's just see this. You'd say spot rate, future price. So resultingly the difference between these two is going to be basis. Then you would be calculating the remaining basis when we talk about the spot rate, the spot rate is going to be what? 1.0292. I bet the spot rate is going to be 1.0292. What is the price of the future contract? The price of the future contract is what? Is 1.0369 Yeah, the number of contracts is 98, not 94 Sarmad, number of contracts are 98, not 94. It's 98.4, so that's why I've written 98, the round figure.
Okay, the basis is going to be what? And for the remaining basis, since we are expected to have a receipt on 31st May, so that means one month basis would remain. So this is equal to this multiply 1 upon 7 equal to 1 upon 7. This is going to be equal to 1 upon 7. Now what next is there? So you've got the lock-in rate also. I repeat, you've got the lock-in rate also. Now what next is there? The next situation is, uh, sorry, in fact, we are doing the lock-in rate calculation. So the price of future contract is is 1.0369 the remaining basis is going to be deducted hence the lock-in rate is going to be like this 1.0358 Okay, if you just, just try to see that this forward rate is also the same. So what is actually going to happen is that ultimately uh, the unhedged amount, the unhedged amount will also be hedged at 1.0358. The total receipt in dollars will be. So, how much is the total receipt in dollars that is going to be? Equals to 1.0358 multiplied by 12.3 million. Again, 12.74 is what the expected receipt in dollars is going to be if you are using the futures contract what is 94 i have not written 94 okay 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 i have made a mistake over here it's 98 sorry about it okay thank you for highlighting it sorry about it Okay, just go through it and let me know if you all are okay with this. I will expand it to whatever possible extent that I can. Yeah, please go through it and let me know if there are any issues in this. How come 0 0.011? Okay, here it is. It's a remaining basis that I have calculated. I repeat, it's a remaining basis that I have calculated. Okay, anyone else having any other issues, please? Okay, for 12.74, it's 12.3 million CHF that you got to receive. It's a direct quote will be multiplied with the multiplied with the 1.0358 rate, which has been which has been the rate that we have established using the futures contract using the forward contract.
ये लेट मी नो वेन आई कैन मूव फॉरवर्ड नाउ Yeah, I'm waiting for your response. Please let me know when I can move forward. Okay, I'll try doing that. Don't worry about it. Okay, uh, you want me to explain the risk part? Let's just try to understand. You see, it's a direct quote, and you are expected to receive. So when you are expected to receive, that means you will multiply, and obviously you want to multiply it with a higher rate to get ultimately greater amount. CHF 12.3 million is being received. You need to multiply it with a higher rate to get the greater amount. Now the risk is that the exchange rate will go down. Your risk is not that the exchange rate will go up. Your risk is exchange rate will go down. So that my that means you are expecting the exchange rate is high right now. It will become lower later on. So it's high right now, sell right now. It will become lower later on. You buy later on. That's why we do it. So overall, 98 contracts, June contracts, and sell now, buy later. That's why it is. Okay, why did I deduct it? Why did I deduct it? Because now let's just try to see the connection here. I repeat, let's just try to see the connection here. Basically what happens is, always remember that when you are calculating the expected lock-in rate, I repeat, I'll repeat it that when you are calculating the lock-in rate, This is the spot rate and this is a future contract price. You are going from future to spot. So if you would see trend in this specific question, the if you would see trend in this question, the spot rate was 1.0292. The price of the future contract was 1.0369. The price of the future contract was 1.0369. Now what is actually going to happen is that that means the exchange rate is increasing, increasing, increasing when it is reaching from here till here. So when you will go back 
you will say minus 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 that is the reason that when we calculated this lock in rate we went from future to spot so when we went from future to spot that's why we deducted it that's why we deducted it do you get it now yeah maneka do you get it now You still don't get it. Okay. Okay, why did we deduct by 1 by 7? Okay, now see. What actually happens is that the date now is 30th September 2000 and whatever that is. Sorry, 30th November. The date right now is 30th November. And what happens is that the future contracts that you are using are June and it is assumed that they have got a maturity at 30th June so time period from here till here is 7 months and we are calculating the rate at 31st May so that means 1 month basis would be remaining I repeat that means 1 month basis would be remaining I repeat 1 month basis would be remaining I did not deduct by 1 by 7 I simply said the difference between these two is the basis let me just see how much does that turn out to be Zero point zero zero seven seven. So this is 0 0.0077 and when you want to calculate this basis you would say 0 0.0077 multiplied by 1 upon 7 gives you 0 0.0011 do you get it now yeah okay see <clears throat> you always need to see I repeat whenever you are calculating the lock-in rate you are going from future to spot whenever you are calculating the lock-in rate you are going from future to spot so what is it that you need to do you just need to do this thing you need to make sure that I repeat what is it that you need to do you need to make sure that um, the rela original relationship between the future and the spot now let's just see if the spot rate was 1.5 and the future price was 1.8 and if the spot rate was 1.5 and the future price was 1.3 so when you will be going I repeat when you will be going from future to spot I repeat when you will be going from future to spot in this scenario you will be deducting but if you look going from future to spot in this scenario you would be adding that is what you have to keep in mind so depending upon the original relationship between the spot and the future the subsequent basis is going to be either added or is going to be either deducted depending upon how the original relationship is that is how things are going to be decided so let me know you all are okay now okay now lastly we have got the currency options it says contract size is this 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 exercise price per quotation is this the premium is US cents per CHF call put December March June etc the future then options now there is only one exercise price that is given the contract size is in CHF the contract size is in CHF so what are you gonna do you're gonna say
with respect to the option contracts let's just try to see you would say that um, receipt of CHF what is the scenario right now you are expected to receive CHF and what would you want to do Newton would like to sell CHF so they need option to sell CHF and option to sell CHF is is a put option the option to sell CHF is a put option I repeat the option to sell is actually a put option so number of contracts are going to be 12.3 divided by 0 0.125 98.4 so round figure is going to be 98 contracts um, which maturity so again June contracts there is only one exercise price that is provided one point zero three seven five So the summarized hedge strategy is going to be by 98 June put options with exercise price of 1.0375 98 June put options with an exercise price of 1.0375 Now what next is there, let's just see. Let's try to calculate everything with respect to these options. The options exercised. CHF sold. zero point one two five million multiplier ninety eight contracts is equivalent to twelve point two five million remaining CHF is 12.3 minus 12.25 and this is going to be We have CHF sold. Now see what happens is that USD receipt from options are going to be what? 12.25 multiply 1.0375. Hence, this is going to be 12.25.
um, USD receipt from forward contract is going to be 0 0.05 multiply 1.0 in fact we already have the price of the future contract 1.0358 less the option premium payable in USD how much is the option premium payable it is US cents per CHF how much is it for the June put it's 0.86 0 0.86 multiply by 0 0.86 multiply by 98 contract multiply by 0 0.125 million divided by 100 let me see yeah it's 0.86 cents per CHF so it is actually gonna be what equals to hence it's going to be 12.655 that is what the hedge is going to be overall so you will have this 12.655 so resultingly what would happen is that the requirement to the question was evaluate which of the exchange traded derivatives would give the higher receipt considering scenarios when options are and are not exercised so this was the scenario when the options were exercised we need to talk about the scenario when the options are not exercised when options are not exercised when the options are not exercised then the CHF is sold at a spot market the expected rate in a spot market is the is the forward rate in six months which is going to be 1.0358 so what actually happens is that USD receipts from selling at a spot market will be what equals to 12.3 multiply by and then the option premium would be paid so this is how it is going to and this is how it is actually going to so you would say based on the workings performed in the spreadsheet based on the workings performed in the spreadsheet Newton company will be better off hedging the transaction using futures contract as under both the situations when the option contracts are exercised or not exercised 
under both situations when the option contracts are exercised or not exercised The receipts are relatively lower as compared to hedging using futures contract. I did convert. I did convert the under hedge using the forward. You see here. I did convert. If I increase the number of decimal places, if I increase the number of decimal places, you would be able to see that I did convert. You get it now? I did convert Tatenda. I did convert. Okay, let me know if you all are okay now. Okay, I'll go over the option again. Yeah, what is it that you need to know with respect to option? Please let me know. Yeah, what is it that you need to know? Add and real, let me know what do you need to know. Okay, in case if the options are not exercised, what are you going to do? You will sell the Swiss francs in the market. And if you will sell the Swiss francs in the market, so what is it that you are going to get? If you will be selling the Swiss francs in the market, you will be getting the, uh, you will be getting the spot rate. And I am assuming the spot rate is going to be the forward rate. Which is going to be this rate and hence this receipt but the option premium would be paid because that's paid up front irrespective of whether options are exercised or not I repeat irrespective of whether options are exercised or not
How come twelve point seven four? Okay, here you go. Twelve point three million multiplied by the exchange rate. Twelve point. I mean, I I am just solving it on the CB platform for you people only. Otherwise, I myself know that it is quite easier to explain if I am writing down using the pen. But I am using it just because of you people, so that you people also understand that what is the technique. I know it's a bit. Challenging to keep a track on what the numbers are moving and how they are moving, but unfortunately, if I don't use CB platform, you people will be stuck. That how would you use in the exam? Okay, any other question on this, please, so that I can move forward now. Okay, seems like all is well. Now let's move a bit forward. Next, it says, discuss the benefits and drawbacks of new turn company in using forward contracts compared with using over-the-counter currency options, and explain why new turn company may prefer to use exchange-traded derivative rather than over-the-counter derivatives to use foreign exchange risk. Now, this is simply. A sort of a textbook type of a question, but still, I'm just going to do a bit of it. Now, when it comes to the forward contracts, what happens is, with respect to the forward contracts, these contracts are binding contracts, and uh, the counterparty, the counterparty risk is involved. That is, in case if counterparty defaults, the entity may end up with no hedge because it's actually depending upon the counter. It's dependent upon the counterparty. Now, with respect to over-the-counter options, over-the-counter options again. The option gives flexibility. I bet the options they give the flexibility. The next thing is that the first thing is the options they give the flexibility. The second thing is that uh, they require upfront premium to be paid. Irrespective of whether they will be exercised or not, um, counterparty risk involved. Use of exchange traded derivatives. have problems as it as they are le as they are less flexible as compared to otc derivatives but the advantageous thing with respect to it is that i bet the advantageous thing with respect to it is that The counterparty risk is not there as the exchange is the guarantor. Exchange is the guarantor. That's a that's a, that's an advantage of this. That the exchange gives you a guarantee. So that is what it is, and ultimately that is why entities would prefer to have exchange traded derivatives as compared to over the counter derivatives. There's this last requirement, 
which is explained to the non-executive director how the mark to market process would work for the CHF futures including the significance of the data supplied by the treasury department. Illustrate your explanation with calculations showing what would happen on the first day using the data supplied by the treasury department. Okay. Now let me guide you with respect to this mark to market and whatsoever that is mentioned over here by the non-executive director. He says a new non-executive director has recently been briefed about the work of the treasury department and has a number of questions about the hedging activities. He wants to understand the significance of the basis risk in relation to futures. Now, let me guide you one thing. The significance of the basis risk is that theoretically we assume that theoretically we assume that Theoretically, we assume that Theoretically, we assume that the basis will reduce on a straight line till the contract maturity but practically this is not this is not the reality but practically this is not the reality it may or it may not move on a on a predicted basis and may lead to results being different to the expectations. That is something that could happen. So what did I do? As soon as I moved through the question, I just did the answer. He also wants to know the significant features of over-the-counter forward and options and why Newton prefer to use exchange traded derivatives for hedging. Okay, so that has already been answered. Now, the non-executive director has also heard about the mark to market process and wants to understand the terminology involved and how the process works using transaction with the Swiss customer as an example. Now see, let me guide you a bit about the concept of mark to market. The concept of mark to market is this I bet the concept of mark to market is this for example for example you bought uh, for example the size of the future contract is $100,000 and the contracts are priced as let's say um, dollar upon CHF example is this now the spot exchange rate the spot exchange rate is whatsoever but the price of the future contract when you buy this future contract was 1.025 at the day end, the price of the future contract is 1.028. So that means, that means, okay, this is CHF. That means that there is actually a 0.0. .0 Right. In fact, 0 0.003. Multiply by 100,000. Multiply by 
gives you three hundred dollar as a loss that has arisen. Why is that so? Because your position is being marked to market. You actually bought a futures contract as one point zero two five. Now the price of the contract is one point zero two eight. That means if you wish to, let's say, if you wish to buy. In fact, just wait a bit. This is not loss. You buy future contracts. When you buy future contracts, so at a later date, what would happen is you would sell the future contract. So now, this is the end of the first day. If you are going to sell right now, the price for selling is one point zero two eight. That means the price for selling would give you a three hundred dollar gain. Now, day two end. The price is become one point zero two four, so this is zero point zero zero four multiplied by hundred thousand. So you would now have a four hundred dollar loss. What is it termed as? This is termed as mark to market. That every day your position is marked to the market. Every day your position is marked to the market depending upon whatever you have bought, whatever you have sold. Your position is marked to market, and the and the gain or loss is established. Now, when you open, uh, when you trade on an exchange, so you trade on an exchange with a broker, or you could say the member of the exchange. The broker or the member of the exchange, what they do is that they charge you initial margin. Let's say they might ask you for giving you thou, they might ask you that give us thousand dollar. What is this initial margin going to be? This initial margin, I repeat, this initial margin is going to be the amount available to cover first day loss. Now, subsequently, subsequently, when they will ask you to pay, let's say, pay us four hundred dollar. So, when they will ask you for paying four hundred dollar. So when they will ask you for this additional contribution, this is going to be termed as margin call. This is going to be termed as margin call. And lastly, if you will pay this four hundred dollar, this is going to be termed as variation margin. I repeat, this is going to be termed as variation margin. So what is it? There is this initial margin. There is this variation margin. Is that okay now? Yeah, is that okay now? Okay, coming back to it. So it says the Treasury Department has supplied relevant information to answer his query. The contract expects for the CHF contract states that an initial margin of one four five zero per contract will be required, and a maintenance margin of one three six zero per contract will also be required. So there is a there is an initial margin which is being kept as a security. There is a maintenance, or you call it variation margin also. Tick size of the contract is this this this, and tick value is this. That means this tick size. Is actually the smallest movement in the value of the contract. This tick size is the smallest movement in the value of the contract. This tick value is the gain or loss arising from one uh, tick movement in the value. You can assume that on the first day when Newton holds the future contract, the loss per contract is this, 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 this. Now. So I would say 
that this initial margin of 1450 1, per contract is there to is there as a security for covering the losses on the futures contract maintenance margin will be used to offset against the losses made during the period of holding the futures contract the tick size on the contract is 0 0.01 shows a smallest movement in the value of a contract that can take place the tick value is 12.5 dollar indicates the gain slash loss that arises on a contract due to one tick movement it is calculated as contract size multiply by one tick assuming 98 contracts are obtained and the loss per contract is this 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 this, this then the amount payable will be as follows at the end of the first day uh, 0 Okay, multiply by 98 contracts is equivalent to what? 0 0.0011 into 98 is dollar 0 0.1078 is what you would be paying. Now that is how it is going to be. Kindly look at it and let me know in case if you've got any questions. Yeah, kindly look at it and let me know in case if you've got any questions on this.